In this video, we're going to break down the beekeeper year into seasons. We'll discuss how each season impacts our bee management from feeding to space management and everything in between. The first thing to consider is let's think like a bee. Bees are resilient and fascinating creatures, and they're going to react to the environment around them as they're impacted by that environment. So as beekeepers, the more we can learn about the bees themselves, their biology, communication, and behavior, the better job we can do as, as managers of them. The biggest advice we can give to you is learn to plan ahead instead of being reactive. Think about what should be happening now, plan for what should be happening in 60 or 90 days. Our good friend E.T. Ash has said that beekeeping is one of those endeavors which reinforces the idea that failure to plan means you should plan to fail. So we'll share his two reasons for why new beekeepers fail. One is the failure to prepare. This means the failure to learn bee biology at both the micro, as in the individual bee, and macro, as in the hive or apiary level and the failure to obtain essential information about the ecology of your landscape. This can include plant types, soil, and rainfall patterns. The second big reason is a failure to plan. This means the failure to establish achievable goals and the failure to obtain ess essential inputs to accomplish those goals, as well as to initiate the plans at the right time. So with that word of warning, we'll start with the most critical season of beekeeping. This is the season where mistakes matter the most. In the fall, our days are getting shorter, the weather cools, and plants may get a second wind to bloom again. The fall flow is shorter than spring and can provide critical nutrition for bees as they prepare for winter. During this time, the bees that will raise your winter bees are beginning to emerge, and this makes reducing stressors in the hive like mite high mite counts, and good nutrition, extremely critical. So in the fall, you're going to want to monitor your mite count. Mites peak population season as at the end of summer and beginning of fall time. And since mites are hive stressors, it's important to monitor hive mite loads and make adjustments as needed. You can decide to treat, requeen, or if the mite loads are low, you can leave them alone. Doing this in the fall when queens are still available, treatments can be done prior to winter bee brood raising is really the best practice. During the fall, hives will grow more slowly despite the fall flow, and you may still need to add space, but understanding that bees will typically begin reducing their brood nest and colony size from this point as they prepare for the winter. In the case of nearly empty boxes or frames, you'll want to reduce the size of the nest cavity where the bees can easily defend and cover the majority of the frames. This helps them to manage pests and ensures that they'll be able to keep the colony warm with approaching cold weather. During the winter, the days are shorter, the bees are producing less or sometimes no baby bees, so the brood nest is really minimal. On cold days, the bees will stay clustered tightly and use little to no energy in a state that we call torpor. You can place an entrance reducer if needed on your hive, but bees will most likely use propolis to seal up the entrance to their desired size, so it's not entirely necessary. This is your last chance to combine a weak colony with a stronger colony to conserve those resources such as drawn comb. And overall, it's best to leave your hives alone during this time, using strategies like lifting up the corner to test for weight of the hive rather than combing through the inside to evaluate your resources. At this point in the year, you really should be done with all, if not most, of in-hive maintenance. The only exception to this are typically for beekeepers who have to get their bees ready for almond pollination. So you may hear see them doing some hive inspections and feeding beyond a typical season. This is done as a management practice to keep the bees brooding so the population is high for pollination purposes a little earlier in the year than what is more natural for the bees. Lastly, you'll wanna make sure you order your queen bees, repair any broken equipment, or build any equipment you intend to use for the next year. Again, planning ahead and having more equipment than you need is better than being stuck without. 
Early spring is when most new beekeepers really begin to prepare for the upcoming year. It's important to know ahead of time that fall and winter are critical seasons and to make sure you understand the full seasonal life cycle as you get ready for the bees to build up. In early spring, you'll begin to see the queen bee laying more eggs, the brood nest beginning to expand. The bees will take a cue from these longer days and begin to prepare for spring nectar flows. During the early spring, it's still often cold, so you'll have days where you can continue to prepare equipment or get your apiary in order. It can also be a risky time for colonies. As they begin to brood up more, they'll have more bees to feed and resources will begin to dwindle even more quickly. This brings with it the risk of starvation prior to that nectar flow. So be sure you watch your hives and, still, and make sure they still have weight and frames of food. In Texas, the sporadic warm weather will actually make it more likely that the bees can eat through their resources and risk starvation. So you'll need to have a plan to feed the bees if necessary. A simple thick sugar syrup works well, two parts sugar to one part water, or really as much sugar as you can get dissolved into that water to make it easier for the bees to eat, eat it right away. Early spring means the first trees will begin to bloom and provide pollen and even some nectar to the bees. Springtime is a fun time of the year for beekeepers. It's busy with activity in the bee yard and it's harder to make mistakes in the springtime because the resilience of the bees when they have resources and time to recover is so good. So this can be a really good time to experiment whether it's requeening your colony or making splits. With an abundance of flower and warmer weather days, the bees will be in full expansion and growth mode. At this time of the year, they can build out a new frame of comb really quickly and fill it with resources. It is less necessary to feed this time of year with natural nectar and pollen sources. And the bees often do not need supplemental feed during the spring. In fact, if you plan to harvest honey, you shouldn't be feeding your bees as it can essentially adulterate your honey. You can remove any entrance reducers you've installed and you may notice that entrances that the bees have propolized shut will begin to open up as the bees re repurpose that propolis and widen the entrances. This helps to ventilate the hive more and make it easier for forager bees to get back with food. For first year beekeepers, you most likely will not be splitting hives in the spring as you've just started with your colony. However, this would be a great time or this would be when you'll do it in the next season. If you're in your second year, then it's the perfect time to go ahead and make splits for the year. Monitor all your hives, even the new ones for swarm cells. It's actually a little common for newly installed packages to build out a queen cell. This is where understanding bee biology really helps since a package of bees does not have established brood comb. The bees likely have to build their honeycomb from scratch unless the beekeeper gave them some drawn comb already. And in this case, the bees don't have the smells of eggs, larva, and brood to show them that the queen is properly doing her job. So they may decide she needs to be replaced and that she's failing. This can also happen if a hive gets overfed and has no room for the queen to lay. We call this backfilling the brood nest. So watch for these issues as you begin to fully inspect your hives so that you can make adjustments as needed. In the summer, bees will slow down their growth a little as compared to spring nectar flow time, but it still may be necessary up until the dearth to add space to the hives. Our general rule of thumb for when to add space is when the bees have filled out about 80 to 90% of their hive cavity. We'll dig a little deeper into space management in other classes, but this will help give you a good rule of thumb as you get started. Spring, summer brings with it the longest days, hot weather, and a possible dearth from the heat as the heat causes flowers to burn up. Beekeepers in more urban areas may have access to irrigated lawns and more reliable access to forage throughout that dearth time, but it may still be necessary to feed your bees. Pulling and extracting honey is most often done in the summer once that spring nectar flow has completed. And this also helps separate natural honey frames in case you decide to supplemental feed your bees later in the summer as you prepare for fall and winter. Now, the key here is to try to leave enough 
frames that you're not having to supplementally feed, but we all understand that weather is unpredictable and sometimes the bees just end up going through more food storage than you expected. You'll wanna make sure your bees have a water source available because the bees are going to use water to cool the internal temperatures inside their hive to keep brood the appropriate temperature. As you begin to do your full hive inspections, mostly in the spring, summer, and early fall, here are the main things you need to look out for. Are there eggs and larvae that show you've got a productive queen? If not, is there a good reason for that? Is she not laying because of the weather or that there's not enough space? Do bees have enough food stored for the time of year they're in? Do they have the expected amount of brood and bees? Are the bees building out comb? Do they have enough space to do that? Are they increasing or decreasing their broodness and population? And I guess comparing that to the seasons as we just discussed, you can decide. Are they looking good or are they looking bad? What signs or smells indicate pests and diseases? Should something be done? So in this case, you can start to make assessments whether your hive needs potentially medication or additional nutrition to help them overcome their situation if they do happen to have pests and diseases. While we'll have much more information coming about bee nutrition and hive inspections, we wanted to dig in a little here to tell you, don't stress. Overcomplicating bees is easy to do. There are so many products and gadgets and supplements to choose from. So we're just here to say, keep it super simple. There's no need to perfectly weigh your mix. Just keep in mind the purpose of thin syrup is to simulate nectar flow. When fed in smaller quantities, this basically simulates um, a nectar flow and will encourage the bees to build up. For thicker syrup, you're reducing the amount of work needed to dehydrate the feed and providing more nutrition per ounce. This is a good way to help fatten the bees up for winter. You'll hear mixed views on pollen patties and sugar blocks. And while we aren't really against this type of feeding, we have often seen it go more wrong than right when adding supplements without a purpose. So our general rule of thumb is just say no to these things unless you actually need them. Reasons you may need this type of feed is if, you're, if you think the bees are going to run out of resources before natural sources are available, or you're attempting to do something against the natural season. For example, promoting growth prior to the growth period for purposes like bee breeding, pollination, or something similar. The goal for most beekeepers looking to feed is to make sure that your bees have enough to get them through times when there's not natural food sources available. That concludes the overview of the honeybee seasons. We really appreciate your support, feedback, and questions, so you can always reach out if you need more information or clarification. We're gonna continue to expand on these ideas with more information on each topic for management. So until next time, happy beekeeping.